हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन द अर्लियर क्लासेस वी स्टडीड अबाउट द केमिस्ट्री ऑफ फैट्स एंड आयल्स एंड आल्सो हाउ दीज आयल्स कैन बी रिकवर्ड आर एक्सट्रैक्टेड फ्रॉम आयल बियरिंग मटेरियल्स लाइक आयल सीड्स एक्सेट्रा तो डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द मेथड यूज्ड फॉर एक्सट्रैक्शन ऑफ आयल एंड द प्रोसेस पैरामीटर्स एलॉन्ग विद द ट्राई ग्लिसराइड्स सम अदर कंपोनेंट्स आल्सो गेट एक्सट्रैक्टेड एंड दे मे इंक्लूड फ्री फैटी एसिड्स एक फॉर एग्जांपल इफ द सीवियर प्रेशर कंडीशंस आर हीट कंडीशंस एक्सेट्रा आर यूज दैट मे रिजल्ट इन टू सम हाइड्रोलिस और ब्रेकेज ऑफ द ईस्टर लिंकेज ऑफ द ट्राइग्लिस सो आयल विच इज गेटिंग एक्सट्रैक्टेड इट मे कंटेन सम अमाउंट्स ऑफ फ्री फैटी एसिड्स द फास्फोलिपिड्स दे मे आल्सो गेट एक्सट्रैक्टेड एलॉन्ग विद द ट्राइग्लिस द फ्री फैटी एसिड डेवलपमेंट मे लीड टू द अमाउंट ऑफ ड्राइग्लिस राइड मानोग्लिस राइड एक्सेट्रा सो द मेजर नॉन ट्राइग्लिस राइड कंपाउंड्स प्रजेंट इन द आयल डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द प्रोसेस एंड प्रोसेस पैरामीटर्स यूज फॉर आयल एक्सट्रैक्शन माइट इंक्लूड फ्री फैटी एसिड्स फास्फोलिपिड्स डाइग्लिस राइड्स मानोग्लिस राइड्स एंड सोवान सिमिलरली सम ऑफ द माइनर नॉन ट्राइग्लिस राइड कंपाउंड कंपोनेंट्स विच आयल माइट कंटेन इंक्लूड टोकोफेराल्स एस्टेराल्स एंड स्टेनॉल्स और स्टेरालिस्टर्स टोकोट्राइनॉल्स कलर कंपाउंड्स और इवन द आयल डिकम्पोजिशन प्रोडक्ट्स सच एज पोलर कंपाउंड्स पॉलीमरिक एल्डिहाइड्स कीटोन्स एंड अदर बोलाटाइल एंड नॉन बोलाटाइल कंपाउंड्स दो दीज इवन पिगमेंट्स एक्सेट्रा मे आल्सो गेट एक्सट्रैक्टेड अलॉन्ग विद द आयल सो दैट इज दीज नॉन ट्राइग्लिस राइड कंपोनेंट्स विच आर प्रेजेंट इन टू द आयल दे शुड बी रिमूव आर दे नीड टू बी रिमूव बिफोर द आयल इज सेंड फॉर फर्दर यूज एज ए एडबुल आयल फॉर कुकिंग पर्पजेज फॉर फ्राइंग पर्पजेज आर फॉर इट्स कन्वर्जन इन टू वेरियस प्रोसेस्ड प्रोडक्ट्स और इट्स यूज इन डिफरेंट फूड प्रोडक्ट्स सो इन आर्डर टू गेट गुड क्वालिटी आयल विच कंटेन्स मेनली ऑफ ट्राइग्लिस राइड्स द एक्सट्रैक्टेड आयल और क्रूड आयल इज सब्जेक्टेड टू वेरियस प्रोसेसिंग स्टेप्स फॉर द रिमूवल ऑफ नॉन ट्राइग्लिस राइड कंपोनेंट्स एंड दीज आर कॉल्ड रिफाइनिंग सो इन द रिफाइनिंग प्रोसेस द आयल is subjected to various physical as well as chemical processes right individually or even sometimes the physical and chemical processes are combined to remove those undesirable components so the objectives of the refining process therefore includes the removal of undesirable components from the crude oil like free fatty acids phospholipids oxidized products metal ions color pigments and other impurities but at the same time the refining process should be conducted in such a manner that the valuable components like uh, tocopherols tocotrienols esterols esteral esters etc they also get extracted along with the oil so they are the valuable component they have good antioxidant properties etc so the refining process should not remove these desirable component or the good component which oil contains apart from this of course the one major objective should be major objective should be accomplished that in the process of refining while these impurities are undesirable components are being removed then this uh, the, it should not lead to the loss of triglycerides so oil losses should be minimized and the of course the oil that is the refined oil should be 
protected that is even the process parameter itself this would not uh, lead to the decomposition of the oil and the oil should uh, be protected against its deterioration. So, in this slide I have just tried to show you the major processes to which oils are subjected a crude oil is subjected in the refining as I told you that is the removal of uh, phosphatides etcetera. So, that is called degumming. So, that is the degumming is the one process you can see here the crude oil uh, pass through that is it comes from the degumming process and what are the degumming and all these processes we will see little later in the details. So, after degumming the degummed oil next step sent to the neutralization step that is again very important. So, in the degumming process the phosphatides are removed in the neutralization steps free fatty acids are removed. Now, the neutralized oil is sent next to the bleaching process where the undesirable or even other pigments or color products etcetera are removed. And finally, last step of the refining process is the deodorization, which is very very important step where even the materials or components which are not removed in earlier processes as well as maybe that during the bleaching and all the other process by again uh, subject to the process parameters used even some minor components may get generated in these process itself. So, these all are removed during the deodorization process that is basically the odors, flavors and all free fatty acids and all other components. So, after deodorization process the oil should be basically bland in taste it should be principally or theoretically it should be only triglyceride and not any other components. And of course, after deodorization even sometime after deodorization or sometime before deodorization depending upon the oil quality and other parameters these oils are also winterized. And generally that is the after bleaching you could see here that is there is a bleached and neutralized oils are stored in the processing line. So, this provides one, uh, one or two major advantages number one that is the in the bleaching process we will see later that is the uh, that is bleaching earth etcetera are added. So, they are further separated during the by the filtration, but it might so happen that a few minor earth particles might remain in the oil. So, during this storage these earth particles get de they get uh, deposited on the bottom of the tank and then are settled on the bottom of the tank and then they get removed. And second advantage of storing the bleached and neutralized oil storage is that the it provides a useful break and from here in the manufacturing line the oil is diverted suppose for hydrogenation process for interesterification process or for conversion of other product normally after bleaching the oil is uh, directed. So, in this lecture today first part of this lecture today we will mainly concentrate on two major operations like degumming and neutralization. The bleaching and deodorization we will take up in the second part of the lecture. So, degumming I told you that is a it is the phospholipids etcetera which get extracted in the oil. So, they need to be removed what will happen if these phospholipids are not removed then they are, these phospholipids are actually good uh, emulsifier. So, their emulsifying action may increase to or may lead to the increased oil losses during refining. Even gums lead brown discoloration of oil after heating during deodorization process. So, if these gums are not removed then after uh, during deodorization process the oil color may be uh, brown or adversely affected. Even salts may be formed with copper, magnesium, calcium and iron accelerating oxidative degradation of the oil. 
these phospholipids for example certain phospholipids such as lecithin etc they find wide spread industrial application so this becomes a valuable product so it should be removed from the aisle for conversion into this valuable product of lecithin etc for use in the food processing industry it is lecithin is used in preparation of various products different products as an emulsifier so these gums are these phospholipids which are present in the aisle they are of two types either hydratable or non hydratable the hydratable gums or phospholipids are easy to remove just by simple water washing whereas non hydratable phospholipids they remove some other treatment than the water maybe that uh, they are little hard to are difficult to remove so they require acid treatment right for their complete removal so acid treatments in fact converts the non hydratable phospholipids into hydratable phospholipids and they gets removed so different uh, degumming processes include i told you water degumming acid degumming enzyme degumming and membrane degumming so all just by simple washing with water or just by by adding acid to the aisle and or enzymes enzyme solution or even the membrane separation process can be used for purification or degumming of the aisle so water degumming in this uh, flow sheet you can see the process which is followed for degumming of the uh, aisle using water and these steps are normally done at the extraction plant earlier in the last class you saw that when we were studying the complete extraction plant of the soybean <coughs> aisle <coughs> extraction unit then it was provided with the degumming water degumming facility so all the uh, extraction plants are provided with the water degumming facility and this so immediately after extraction they are treated with a definite amount of uh, water depending upon the quality of the crude oil and this actually called hydration this process is called hydration process so here that is the oil is uh, intimately mixed with warm water all right that is the oil is first uh, it is this is oil is coming it is there are some heaters are provided here the hot oil at about 80 to 85 degree celsius comes and then this water supply the, in this uh, mixture it is intimately mixed that is hot water is mixed uh, with the hot uh, oil at around 80 85 degree celsius and it is uniformly mixed and it, it, then agitated slowly for about 20 minutes are in the it's passed through the reactor here in this reaction vessel and given the different proper reaction time about 20 minute to half an hour so in this in fact in the reaction vessel the hydratable phospholipid agglomerate at the interface of the oil and water and even they may capture some of the non hydratable phospholipids with them then this and they are after that they are passed through the this uh, pr this hydratable uh, phospholipids they agglomerate and they precipitate basically and then in the next step by using appropriate separation method normally centrifugation etc they are removed so these gums which are removed from here they are uh, passed through they are sent to the like for lecithin production or for purification and uh, preparation of the other gums for their purification characterization and this uh, oil is sent to the drying stream because whatever water has been added here this should be removed so before sending it to the next uh, step so when the oil is trapped by the phospholipids forming an emulsion they told you that these emulsion and these emulsion that is are actually known as gums or wet gums 
So, after a certain reaction period, the hydratable uh, phospholipids are separated. As I told you already, that by using decantation or centrifugation processes. <coughs> then, uh, after doing uh, water degumming at the extraction plant, the IL is pumped through or sent through using appropriate transportation or conveying means to the refining plant. And in the refining plant, of course, it is done in the storage tank and it is said that the refining of the oil starts from the storage tank itself, because during the storage also depending upon the environmental conditions and if the good storage conditions that are there and good, good pumping practices are followed, then some of the oil insolubles they get separated and they get settled in the uh, storage tank. So, from this oil storage tank, the oil is passed through the uh, to the degumming unit, acid degumming unit, and this acid degumming unit may be of uh, two types: dry acid degumming, wet acid degumming. So, the dry acid degumming is particularly suitable for the processing of the oils which have uh, low gum content, such as palm oil, coconut oil, or even the animal fats. So. It is basically the intensive mixing is implemented here that is intensive mixing of the oil acid and uh, preheated oil. The conditioned gums are absorbed into the bleaching earth and are separated by filtration in the next step. So, the benefits of dry acid degumming process are it results into the uh, better efficiency, low energy consumption, low operational and maintenance costs, long serving life, low investment cost and this is a comparatively or you can say environmental or environment friendly process, because no waste streams are generated here or the soap stock and other excessive water is not used. In the wet acid degumming, initially the oil which has a higher gum content like corn oil, rapeseed oil, etcetera, they are processed to the in the similar manner initially like that of the acid degumming. However, to achieve gum hydration, water is added following the acid addition and acid mixing. So, along with the, this is in the, it is not the dry acid which is used here rather it the acid along with the water and solution in the appropriate form of the acid solution is used here. So, the gums are removed by a separator prior to bleaching and this process is beneficial as the centrifuges enable easy separation of gums in oil with higher oil hydratable gums. The consumption of the bleaching earth also is reduced in the wet bleaching process uh, which wet acid degumming process, because the oil has already been extensively degummed. So, most of the majority of the phospholipids etcetera they are all removed in this process. So, here you see that uh, the steps in the picture diagram, diagram uh, or schematic representation of the acid uh, degumming processing steps. So, there is a oil income oil comes and these are passed through the heaters where the oil is heated to 60 to 70 degree Celsius and then it is sent to the there is a acid tank where the by appropriate means are uh, dry acid uh, in appropriate concentration or acid solution of desired concentration it is uh, mixed with this oil in this unit and finally, it is passed. So, maybe that acid uh, first we may mixed and then water we mixed at the de depending upon the requirement whether you are going for the dry acid degumming or wet acid degumming. Then it is sent to the reaction mixture where the reaction time that is a uh, hydration mixing time of about 25 to 30 minutes is allowed. And the where the hydratable gums and well, non hydratable gums are converted into hydratable gums and in all these are uh, precipitated and these precipitated gums 
are removed using centrifugal separation process and finally, the gum removed oil is dried into vacuum dryer to remove every possible trace or traces of the water present in the oil. So, after that the other process that is enzymatic degumming process another potential uh, process for removal of phosphatides or gums etcetera from the oil that is the figure. In fact, uh, the pro processing steps are same only only difference here is that is in earlier case you are using water in other case you are using acid solution. Here in this case we are using an enzyme solution that is the enzyme solution which is basically aqueous solution of citric acid, caustic soda and uh, suitable enzymes which can uh, react with uh, these <coughs> gums. Okay. So, this enzyme solution is dispersed into filtered oil right, and kept at desired temperature and set at the desired temperature into the reaction mixture because here in the enzyme. So, the temperature and other conditions acidity pH etcetera in the reaction vessel all should be maintained which uh, are desired for the better reaction of the enzyme. So, a high speed rotating mixture is used for effective mixing of the enzyme solution and the oil and the conversion of non hydratable phospholipids into hydratable phospholipids is attained actually by the action of the enzyme. The membrane degumming is a normally earlier we have already studied in detail the membrane separation process. So, principle is the same that is the microfiltration or ultrafiltration they offer potential they are methods of promise they can be used and in fact, some of the industry they are using it for the removal of that phosphatides and other components which are present. So, basically it may be that uh, membrane degumming may be done in two ways either degumming of the crude solvent free vegetable oil or even degumming or removal of the component from the micellar that is the oil solvent mixture. The however, this uh, membrane sub membrane processing here that is membrane degumming of the oil has certain inherent uh, problems like that of uh, the uh, drastic flux reduction because of the even in the initial experimental stage itself there might be pore blocking or concentration polarization and because of the concentration polarization the cake formation is there and it results into the uh, it, uh, it results into the this uh, re reduction in the flux. So, operation becomes little difficult or costly to manage. So, after degumming there is degummed oil that is with uh, no water content it is sent to the refining. The refining are basically that is the it is a removal of the free fatty acids or such other components from the oil. There are two methods used for the refining process it may be a physical refining process or it may be a chemical are generally called alkali refining process or neutralization. It may be accomplished in a batch or a continuous process. So, in this uh, figure you see the, the physical refining process that is crude oil that is the filtered acid conditioning like after removing the gum etcetera it is bleached into the bleacher with acid activated cloth and then uh, all these things are removed and finally, that is the filter filtration basically is used to remove the all the that is filtration bleaching and acid degumming etcetera. They are used to remove the suspended particles and all other things are even repaired to acid etcetera. Then even this uh, it helps in reducing the total phospholipids in the oil to a very very lower level the bleaching in addition remove the remaining phospholipids free fatty acid monoglyceride and all these things are removed in the physical refining process. So, basically it is a the using 
no chemicals that are used here like in the alkali refining, but in the physical means are used to remove the like adsorption, like filtration, like centrifugation etcetera all these are used to remove the impurities like free fatty acids and other things which are present there. <coughs> in the chemical refining process which is more commonly used by the industry for the refining of the crude oil obtained from the seeds like soybean, cotton seeds, sunflower, groundnut and so on. In this process crude oil is pre-treated with phosphoric acid that is acid degummed oil is treated with a, a appropriate strength or solution of sodium hydroxide that is the caustic soda. So, in fact, in this process there is an intimate mixing of the degummed oil with the caustic soda solution. So, this, this sodium hydroxide reacts with the free fatty acids forms uh, appropriate soap and this soap phase is uh, then removed from the oil uh, that is using decantation and uh, centrifugation process and of course, it is uh, all that is all the so, uh, water is washed and in the two three stages and to ensure that all the free fatty acid and all the soap phase is properly removed. So, this uh, batch process and continuous process in the batch process you can see it is basically a reaction vessel ok. Crude oil is taken into this uh, refining kettle, the kettle is equipped with the agitator as well as baffles to prevent uh, vortex formation and the caustic solution is added into the kettle after acid pretreatment and the mixture is agitated at low speed and the temperature of the neutralization in this uh, is generally kept 35 to 40 degree Celsius for the seed oils. The free fatty acids should be maximum 0 0.01 to 0 0.02 percent and the phosphorus should be less than 5 ppm after the this uh, neutralization treatment. So, this oil is next heated uh, to 85 to 90 degree Celsius and 10 to 15 percent DNI water is added. Agitator speed is increased for obtaining intimate mixing. So, that this uh, oil is uh, there is properly whatever soap phase is it is proper reaction time is given and then it is given time for the soap to settle ok. Water washing and draining step follows to remove soap and oil is treated with 1 to 3 percent acid activated clay and bleached under vacuum at 110 to 120 degree Celsius that means this is bleaching and step we will see further in the next. So, of course, uh, uh, there are certain critical points to be considered or to be taken care of during this uh, neutralization process like agitator speed must be optimum if it is low speed that is a uh, it uh, is in good for neutralization process medium speed is good for washing process and high speed is good for better bleaching effect bleaching clay if that uh, it require higher doses of clay as compared to the continuous process this is because the refined oil and water washed oil contains high level of soap and the phospholipid deactivates some of the bleaching clay. So, not all of the bleaching clay is effective in reducing the color bodies in the oil. Even the refining glasses they are generally high in the batch process as compared to the continuous process. So, the process parameter etcetera should be accordingly properly optimized and standardized. So, in the continuous process again it is in the in principle the process is same as that of the batch process here also it is intimate mixing of the oil with the suitable concentration of alkali and uh, giving proper reaction time and then settling and then the removal of the soap. But this is the here the crude oil undergoes a series of the process like heating, acid treatment, caustic treatment, mixing, soap, separation, water washing etcetera continuously as you could see here in the uh, 
process flow chart and the <coughs> here also there are certain points one should con consider that is the crude oil filtration that is before it is oil crude oil before it is passed through the neutralization it should be properly filtered it should not uh, contain any undesirable component like hulls dirt etc otherwise even the centrifuges are separators etc they may get dirty even crude oil pre treatment proper pre treatment is essential for all crude oils especially for those that have been derived from poor quality seeds or the which are uh, derived from the seeds that are damaged during storage in fact low acid treatment cannot reduce non hydratable phospholipids at the same time high acid treatment can cause breakdown of the chlorophyll in the crude oil making it more sensitive to photo oxidation and it will need higher caustic treatment similarly uniformity of the crude oil composition is very important if the crude oil has non uniform components or non uniform composition then it may cause under refining or over refining then uniformity of crude oil flow even the flow in the continuous process should be informed to maintain the better or optimum process efficiency the very very important factor is the caustic strength and the temperature to be which should be maintained in the reaction vessel if the caustic strength is <coughs> sorry if the caustic strength is too high then it may in addition to forming the soap it may also result into the hydrolysis of certain triglyceride and which may ultimately result into the loss of the oil in the soap phase similarly if the temperature is too high that also may have the similar effect it may result into some degradation or some hydrolysis of the triglyceride on the other hand if the caustic strength is lower low, less than very weak lye solution it may result into a weak emulsion formation and which may be difficult to separate during the by centrifugation and other process and it may lead to the higher oil losses similarly degree of mixing between the crude oil and caustic solution contact time between the crude oil and caustic solution and refining temperature all this becomes important step so friends now by now you have seen that uh, what are how the degumming and neutralization or uh, deacidification of the crude oil is done in the refining plant and this uh, refined or neutralized oil degumed and neutralized oil is next sent to the bleaching unit and from after the bleaching deaderization or conversion of the other products like hydrogenated products or this uh, winterized win, winterized product winterization or interestification etc so this details we will take up in the next class thank you very much